Hello everybody, Buddy Webb, Midland, Texas. Uh, I got a video today I think you're going to really find interesting. And uh, it, it's going to be based off a Facebook post from today called uh, Bush Presidential Memorabilia. And I'm just going to uh, jump right in. Uh, uh, and I did a write-up on it, and then of course, as I do often, I take the paragraphs, I put them in the comments, and then I back them up with uh, with proof uh, pictures and, and stories and all that. And it tells the story real well and shows you the evidence and the reasoning and, and you know, and uh, and the theory and all that. And, and so, but the short version here is that one of my hobbies is antique collecting, going to estate sales and garage sales, antique stores. And since I'm in Midland, and this is the hometown of the Bushes, then uh, I often run into uh, uh, signed pictures and, and at people's homes, and, you know, and they're for sale, good price at stake. I collect them because, you know, I figure that my kids and grandkids someday, well, you know, appreciate that this is signed by the president or whatever, you know. And, and I happen to be in this town where there's a lot of that, and, and so or I run into it sometimes. So, so I'm going to show you some of my presidential memories memorabilia that I've collected. Then I'm going to get into the story, okay? Uh, this one is is one of my just prized possessions right here. This is a poster from the Reagan-Bush uh, election in 1984, and, uh, and, it, and it's actually signed by Ronald Reagan, personally signed, and, and I have that one framed and hanging on my wall, you know, and, but that was, so Bush was uh, vice president back then in the 80s. This one is another poster uh, D Adair did it. It's a large poster, and and you can see H uh, W uh, the father W Bush, and then it looks like a Jeb at the bottom of that one. Uh, this one here is at here. I'm gonna show you. This is the one of the Bush homes around here. This is a uh, Bush and uh, George W Lara Bush, 1405 Golf Course, Midland, Texas. And I and I'm guessing a piece of carpet carpet from that house, original carpet. And and probably that picture maybe is taken there. I don't know that. Well, I I don't know. I, uh, obviously, it was after he's president, based on his age, but. But this home was one home that my realtor showed me when I first moved here. And uh, and interesting, when I walked into that home, and I'm, I'm thinking back, that was before I bought this home. She showed me this home. Uh, uh, there was a terrarium right in the front of it. Well, my next door neighbor has a similar glass, enclosed glass terrarium, and it has a concrete slab in the middle that I often wondered. I wonder if that's a tunnel entrance under there. You know, it'd be perfect because, you know, the ground's already busted out. And then there's that, that little square, you know, three by three block of concrete that, you know, could be a door or whatever. But anyway, that home there that I looked at, it also had that glass tin terrarium when you went inside there. And and, and looking back and going, oh, that'd be interesting if it was, you know, rigged with underground access. I don't know that. I'm just I'm just saying something I noticed. This one here is signed. It has actually the seal. This is the father, H.W. Bush, right here. You can see it was uh, it was to a doctor, Doctor Gooch, uh, uh, and uh, with best wishes. And you see the signature of, of uh, George H.W. Bush on that one. This one that's that's the same picture as earlier, and and it was to Mary Fesser, I guess you know. Uh, and I don't know if them are computer signed or if they're actual signed or not. You know, sometimes you get that with uh, the presidential stuff. This is a large uh, pudding glass picture that's been blown up. And you see the bushes there. And, you know, signed on this side to uh, to Nelson Allison, uh, George and Laura Bush. And then on this side to... Uh, Marion Looper, and you look at them exact signatures, and that's where I'd say that's probably our computer sign, you know, versus uh, the actual real signature there. Uh, okay, there's a, there's a sign outside of Midland, hometown. Uh, welcome to Midland, hometown of President Bush, Lar Bush. Let's see if I've gone through all of them. Yeah, I think that's all. Okay, so anyways, here's the write-up. Like I said, I'm going to do it 
paragraph by paragraph. And this is where we get into the meat and potatoes, the good stuff in here. It's going to find it very interesting. Okay. The small city of Midland, Texas has a population of 175,000, but it has had two presidents come from it. I believe this is because it's an extremely wealthy town, which is on top of the biggest oil field in the nation, the Permian Basin. Often find signed pictures of the state cells, which I collect for my children and grandchildren to have. And, and that's kind of what I was showing you. My next comment here is, interestingly, my realtor, Janine Pruitt, showed me the Bush home on golf course before she showed me this home when I was transferring to town back in 2008, right after the young previous owner of my home, Mike Lawhon, had died. That was the week before the 2008 old show started. I think that's significant because... Uh, it's believed that there's a million dollar underground home in the backyard that was hosting parties for the Permian Basin International Oil Show. This is a picture of Janine Pruitt. I've got it. I put it in a recent video because it was showing that she worked for Pine and Beckett and David Pine had bought one of the homes where uh, the owner had been reporting people in the attic. And David Pine owns Pine and Beckett and Janine works for him and she found me this rig for murder home, you know, rig for crime, racketeering, etc. Questions been asked if David Pine, Janine Pruitt know anything about the million dollar underground homes that were hosting parties for international oil shows. You know, if they do, they have information on capital murders and they need to report that ASAP okay this one here is just factual George H.W. Bush was president from uh, January 89 to 93 uh, vice president from 81 to 89 okay so he was vice president in the 80s and director of the CIA from uh, January 76 to January 77 and and you know we could click on that and get the history of Wikipedia for George H.W. Bush the dad okay from Midland the Iran-Contra scandal happened between August 20th, 85, and March 87. I had a person suggesting that maybe the underground homes here was connected with the arms sales in Central America since Midland isn't too far from the border, okay? You see the logic, you know, somebody says, what if them homes over there, the million-dollar underground homes, secluded truck unloading lane, all that, Midland's next to the border there, that's where the bushes are from, and at the same time, Iran-Contra was going on where they were selling arms in Central America and, and you know, connected back to Iran, etc. And, and you can, you know, click on this, go to the Wikipedia page and read all up about the Iran-Contra affair. But the point is, is that happened back in, and like I said, it said up till March 87. And that's going to be kind of interesting here with the next uh, comment. Because I said, a CAD programmer named Layla O'Brien told me that she worked on this underground project here, which is believed to be four three-bedroom homes buried at least 25 foot deep and where the famous old show parties were held. She said they had a, a budget of $7.35 million, and it was finished in 1987. It was called the Safe House Project, and she believed the bushes were connected to them. Uh, H.W., the father, was vice president at the time during the 80s. She is only one of many people now documented saying that tunnels and underground homes are here, besides proof showing that I was shot by somebody under my home. Irrefutable proof. And this is one print screen I've got, and I have more for Layla, more, you know, more evidence on Layla, but... But, you know, it, she's telling in, in the public, in front of everybody, it's $7.35 million. they called safe houses. And, and it's what I just told you. And uh, and she was one of many people, uh, you know, and, uh, and you know, that was, was saying saying these underground homes are here, actually giving me specific dates, at, uh, et cetera. I, you know, 100% believe it. I believe that's where the oil show parties were going on. You know, Layla got, off, uh, got offline, and I haven't seen her. I don't know if she blocked me. I don't know if she was threatened and and i'm always concerned about you know people being threatened because they open up and all of a sudden you know I, i'm gonna make a point of it i'm gonna i'm gonna go look like what layla said and then all of a sudden maybe she's threatened i had asked her one time i said did you have to sign anything you know when, when you did that oh i had to sign more stuff of that project than any job we ever did you know and and so i think there was a non-disclosure non-disclosure agreements, you know, of, hey, you know, if we use these to rape and murder little girls, you know, at oil show parties, then you can't say anything, you know. And, and by the way, a non-disclosure agreement is not binding when it's, when it, when it's covering up capital murders, you know. So I just want to make point that out. The NDA means nothing when you're using it to murder little girls and murder the homeowners above, okay. 
George W. Bush was president from January 20, 2001 to January 2009, and governor of Texas from January 17th to December 21st, 2000. I voted for him, you know, and, you know, and, and uh, at my, I remember, you know, when 911 was uh uh came right after he's in the office you know i was so proud of you know how bush stood up for that and um and so he would that's when he was in office right there okay uh bush george the the younger george w used to be an oilfield landman here and i've long suspected that some other landmen were connected with the underground oil show parties in fact it's believed that a young landman attorney named matt hyman was electrocuted in my hallway two weeks before the murder attempt on my life when i was ambushed and shot by somebody under my home and it's even been questioned if 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 uh, Matt Hyman dying in my hallway during that earlier home invasion was a motive for murder. You know, two weeks later, when the premeditated home invasion capital murder temp happened on January 28, 2012. And the point I'm making, he was one of the landmen. Here's George Bush. I just Googled George Bush landman, Midland, Texas. You can do that. Go to Google. There it is. Uh, he received a landman, okay? He was, Bush was a landman. Bush was a landman. Bush was a landman. So I think, we, you know, we can... You know, Bush is a very famous land man, but but I'm also wanting to talk about some of the other land man. Land man attorney Matt Hyman is suspected of being electrocuted in my way two weeks before the murder attempt. There it is, young man. You know, and 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 I've told this story many times. I'm a, I'm gonna skip over it real quick, but he's only 33. Died January 14, 2012. I'm ambushed and shot two weeks later on the 28th. Right? He worked a uh, petroleum land man for Choate. Okay. Uh, he also was an attorney for Cotton Bled, so Ty and Dawson, and that's the city's attorney. Okay. His sister-in-law was my nurse, and I was asking her questions, trying to eliminate him. Was he in my home or not? Was he one of the people that was here? Did he get? Did he die by grabbing my doorknob which i had electrified to stop a home invasion i was concerned they were trying to kill me and but uh, oh no he had a heart heart problem nobody knew he had you know and and i said was he messing with electricity oh no 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 i said well when did he die because if he died that morning when him oh no he he died you know same exact time cheap electricity on the door just happened to be the only witness was his wife and then hit you know his widow and she goes on to marry a, another land man a guy that threatened me okay desperate to stop me from asking questions and i'm gonna talk about that here in a minute brian hillman chris Mertz. Both land men both threatened me in a desperate attempt to stop me from asking questions about land man attorney Matt Hyman dying here two weeks before the murder attempt, you know. And here's Brian Hillman. Yeah, you know, I suggest you take this down. I sent you a private message. And Maria's here. Are they always stretching like this, buddy? You know, because everybody could read it. Here's Chris Mertz, you know. I'll answer this face to face like a man. You accept the consequences. I worked with this guy. You know, he was on my floor with DCP Midstream. And our landman, we called them right away agents, they reported to the commercial group. And the director of the commercial group used to live across the street from my home. And all our landman reported to him, Ken Slager at 3803 Fair Circle. He moved shortly before I, uh, I transferred in town. And then after I was shot, I was told that he was forced laid off, you know, after I was ambushed and shot my home. I had reported five co-workers with my company the year before because I believe they knew who was breaking my home. And now I think it's because of them underground oil show parties. Okay. Former Midland land man, Justin Bartlett, makes a weird Facebook post after, after I posted a comment about God saving my life when the shot threaded the needle. It sounded like he felt like somebody had insulted his shooting skills, so I wonder if he shot me. I bet this guy at the local park, he lived in my neighborhood, in my neighborhood not too far away. Now I think he lives over, he's from Lubbock area, and now I think he lives back over there in the Lubbock area. I don't, think, I don't even think he's in Midland anymore, and I don't think he's a land man anymore, but he was. And I saw this Facebook post right here, and uh, and it was just odd, you know, because it was obscure. But I had just posted, I was, you know, I was giving God the praise and glory for saving my life. Turns out I don't know how to fire a weapon, huh? Who knew? I mean, all these years, since I was five or six, all that hunting, you know, I killed. I hate to see how good a shot I'd be with proper tainting, you know. Uh, some people, lesbian marriage, only because you think you have a pair. So he's talking to somebody without calling their name out. And, and somebody insulted his shooting skills. And I had just posted that the shot 
you know, threaded the needle between a, between a vein and artery, and it was a miracle that I lived, you know. And he was a land man, okay? So I'm wondering, I wonder if Justin Bartlett knows about the underground homes and also parties, okay? Here's another one. The mayor of Midland, when I was shot and left for dead in some home, was Wes Perry. And his late father was a famous landman named Charles Perry, who was the 2012 Permian Basin also honoree. Okay. He passed away. So, you know, he's 87. He died in 2016. Owns a large company worth a quarter of a, uh, a billion dollars, I believe. Perry Industries. And uh, but uh, here we go. He went to work as a landman, 1966. You know, longtime member of the Permian Basin Landman Association. Son West Perry. And I tell you what, when um, when I was ambushed and shot, West Perry's business partners was Sir Jacob Rothschild, uh, uh, Dick Cheney, former Vice President of Bush, Dick Cheney, and uh, Rupert Murdoch, and they were drilling for gas in the Golan Heights over in the Middle East. And and so, you know, I, I think that's interesting in itself, and uh, that connection back there. Some very, very wealthy people. One guy had told me, he says, uh, he says, you don't know how big these people are. You know, well, there were some pretty big people right there. You know, I wonder if they ever been to the million-dollar underground homes where these old show parties were going on, and other parties. Okay, so my next paragraph is George Bush was president on 911 and had one woman, and I had one woman suggest that maybe the missing gold, which was under the World Trade Center, was stored in the underground homes here. That was an interesting theory. And there's a secluded trucking lane uh, directly behind my home, which would make that the perfect location. This picture I got off the internet, that was uh, supposedly found in one of Epstein's mansions. And it's obviously, it's George Bush with a paper airplane and, some, and, you know, and some ginger tower blocks right here. You know, and it's a reference suggesting that George Bush, Epstein was suggesting that George Bush was connected with 911. He had just become president when, when 911 happened. Okay, so you do go out there and Google, you know, and you can do that yourself, do your own research for the huge, was there really a huge gold depository uh, looted on 911 that was under the World Trade Center? So, you know, here's Corey, you know, it's a question and answer site, uh, 911 conspiracy theories, you know. And, and that's the question. Was there a huge gold disport, uh, depository looted on 911? And this guy, one of the top answers, says there really was a huge depository. Vehicles were found in tunnels at ground zero loaded with gold bars, that, but they had been abandoned and no bodies were found associated with them. I wrote another answer on this subject. They got 37,000 views. I had a hard time finding it because it was collapsed. Cora said it was collapsed due to downvotes and, and claimed that it lacked attribution. I, I, I attributed history comments. So he's thinking there was, you know, s suggesting there was intentional censorship, which we see all the time. I see it all the time. What happened to the gold in the basement of the World Trade Center after 9-1 uh, attacks, if there was any, okay? And here's just some of the you know, some of the comment, large amounts of gold are stored in the vaults in the massive basement below the World Trade Center. Some of this is being transported through the basement this morning. Several weeks later, recovery workers will discover hundreds of ingots in the service tunnel below uh, World Trade Center 5 and with a 10-wheel lorry and some cars, which were presum presumably transporting the gold. The lorry and cars had been crushed by falling steel. No bodies had been reported found. Okay, so these, you know, this was, uh, this is reported before 9 52 a.m. on September 11th, etc. You know, and and so here's another one here. Workers at Ground Zero discovered large amounts of gold. Then another, in the Bank of Nova Scotia gold located under World Trade Center Building Four. Okay, and and so they're referencing these news articles saying here's all this gold, 750 million billion dollars worth of gold. Okay, this one was interesting. November 2nd, 2001, Giuliani, who was the mayor of New York City during 911, reduces number of firefighters at ground zero following recovery of gold. New York City Mayor angers firefighters when he decides to severely reduce the number of them that can reach for search for remains at ground zero. Until now, up to 300 firefighters at a time had been involved in the search and recovery effort. Giuliani's decision will mean no more than 25 at a time can do so in the future. Okay, this is a news article. Okay, and, and that's interesting. We know who Giuliani is. He's, he's President Trump's uh, lawyer now, right? 
And so, anyway, I just uh, uh, I, I just hit that. Y'all can look that up yourself. I did a video on it. 911 goes stored in secret underground homes, question mark. And that was based on that woman going, maybe the, the gold, of uh, the missing gold from 911 is stored, you know, under there. And, and so, you know, here you can go look up this video I got, 911 goes stored. And what I did was um, I played a little part of the loose change video. It's very famous. 911 conspiracy video that talks about the ghost. Did you get that? Okay. Y'all can watch that. That's Loose Change, second edition. Super, super famous. I have a billion people watch that video. It's much longer than that. I only focused on the gold part, right? And 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 so late so the last thing here is the secluded trucking lane behind my home would be the perfect place to smuggle drugs, weapons, humans, or even gold, especially with four million dollar underground homes and a secret police gang to protect them. And and this is just the ten thousand foot view. Uh, you know, Google Maps, my home, thirty eight oh two Fair Circle, Midland, Texas. And what I'm showing here, when you back off and you look from above. And here is, if you're in Midland, this is Midland Drive. This is the Target store. That's the Home Depot store. This is the Fairmont Park Church of Christ, okay? So when you turn in here behind Target, okay, uh, you run straight into the Home Depot. So you can't, if you're driving by, you can't see behind Home Depot. Perfectly secluded trucking lane back there. That's where I've documented all the suspicious traffic, okay, was back in here, okay? And so, you know, here Midland's sitting on I-20. I, I could see a truck just coming into I-20, coming down here, and then they're back in there, and then they can offload that gold and go underground, you know? And it looks like there is one of them four underground homes in my backyard. That's where it's believed that that little girl was murdered at the 2010 Olsho party. You know, there's so much evidence on these underground homes. So many people even a, a recent candidate for sheriff, uh, Joe Lozano, I recorded him earlier in the year telling me that Sheriff Painter used to hang out down there. You know, this guy was running for sheriff. I mean, you know, you can bet they're there. So anyway, that's the, the theory there, the gold theory and the connection with Bush 911 gold. I have no proof of that. I'm just sort of throwing it out there and, and thought y'all would find that interesting. Somebody's covering up, you know, these murders for some reason though, right? And uh, when there's incredible evidence, I was also told that the sister of a Secret Service agent, I think it's Moody was the name for George Bush, lived across the street from my home next door to where the late brother-in-law of U.S. Congressman Mike Conaway used to live. Conaway is a longtime friends with President Bush. OK, so this here, uh, you go to the Midland County Central Prices District, MidCAD. And, and, you know, you can pull up any address. Well, there's only nine homes in the secluded truck, uh, secluded cul-de-sac directly behind the Home Depot store, okay? And 
And I went through and I pulled the deed history for all the homes. So the Home Depot store is up here. This is my home, okay? So I'm showing here's Buddy Webb, okay? And then, and then I was on the previous owner, Mike Law Hunt. Well, he died on, uh, you know, the the week before the 2008 oil show started, right? That home was sold to him by Brandy Merrill, okay? And I have a line come down here. And Brandy Merrill lived across the street over here in this home at 3809 Fair Circle. Well... That home is what I call the Conaway home because that's where John Lejeron lived and that's the late brother-in-law of U.S. Congressman Mike Conaway. And a woman that used to own my house, Brandy Merrill, lived in this house uh, when I first moved here. You know, I thought that was kind of interesting myself, you know. And here's here's other, you know, I've, I've documented all the way back to the uh, to the builders with Tabor Construction. So a Morris Kurt, he's a... Um, a teacher, a retired teacher here. His kids threaten me. I've got proof on that. And then uh, Offenberger, Randy Offenberger was a was an engineer for Pioneer Oil Company, you know. And that's when they were put in. I had one guy tell me, "Yeah, those company homes over there, as in old company homes, you know." And there happens, you know, it looks like there's a underground oil, uh, a underground home in the backyard used for oil show parties, you know. So you can go through and look at this. It's on my Facebook. Here's the current owner there, Eli Vargas. That's where it's suspected there was a tunnel entrance in that backyard. I made videos on that. This home right here, Ken Slager, he was the commercial director. All our land man reported to him. He lived across the street from me uh, before I moved in here, which is, I think, very interesting. And that's that land man con connection. Uh, he sold that house, which went to Marilyn Delugie. She's the one that told me twice... Mike Lahan died in my home when his death certificate says he died in Fort Worth, you know. And, of course, there was um, a conflict in reports, actually two different death notices put out by the Odessa American. First one said he died in Fort Worth, and the second one four days later where they changed the location of death, say he died at his residence, you know. Uh, Tulane Gwen said that's a Vietnamese name, next door neighbor to me. She had her home broken into in 2014 and said it was uh, the police. She told me that the police told her it was somebody who lived in this home at the time the Martins lived there, okay? And so she, Tulane said that, uh, that, that, uh, she reported a burglary in 2014 and the police told her somebody from this house, from the Martin house, had broken her house and then they move, okay? So they move. And I've long suspected this house, 3811, might have connection. And, you know, I don't know which one of these homes might have underground connections, you know, uh, you know, to the tunnels or the facilities, whatever, you know. Even two lands, she's the one, when you walk in the door, is the is the glassed-in terrarium that has dirt and has a con little, you know, three by three concrete block in the middle. I'm going, man, that'd be a perfect place for, a, you know, a tunnel entrance right there. And I saw the same thing was at that bush home on golf course. It looks d just like that, similar. And, uh, and so I thought that was interesting. Freddie Haltom here, he, he's a, um, he's a gun instructor, you know, for, uh, gun safety, you know, and I was shot with a special bullet, right? I was sparked shot with a, a Glazer safety slug from 45, uh, a plastic tip pellet filled bullet, make it look like I'd shot myself, you know. I bet he would know something about it because he's a gun expert, you know. That, you know, that's one thing there. And, um, and then what else is on there? Bruce Paget here, he's a locksmith. His daughter was murdered here in Midland. I wondered maybe if there was a connection to that. And then I got a video, I think it was earlier this year, where, where they dumped two or three uh uh, dump trucks full of dirt in his backyard and and i made i made a video of that and so anyway that's the deed history here on the on the home i want to show you that and then and especially the connection to conaway u.s congressman mike conaway and and keep in mind he announced his retirement two weeks after i made that video about the concrete bin board here he is he's long time friends with george w bush that's george w bush Mike Conaway when they were younger. Okay, got that off the internet. And here is brother-in-law of U.S. Congressman Mike Conaway lived across the street from my home. This is John Ledron. Okay, and I'm gonna show you where I got that from the from the appraisal district. I showed you earlier at, at he, that house was sold in 04. Now I didn't move here till 08. And it was sold to John David Ward. I don't know anything about him. Maybe he knows something. Uh, and then it got sold to Daniel Price. Daniel Price got married to Brandy 
Merrill, and Brandy Merrill's the one that sold that home to Mike Lahan, and, and of course that's where Marilyn Deluge said Mike died in my house twice, okay, so you can see that that connection, so, but she was living in the, what I call the Conaway home, okay, and now there's a Wilson family there, William Wilson is the now owner, and if you look at this, um, if you, if you look at this obituary of John Legeron, there's basically uh, John Legeron, okay, uh, survived by his wife, his son's Gary Click, t uh, w who's doing prison for sexual assault or whatever, Terry Legeron, John Edward Legeron, daughter Dorsey Legeron, and the sister Suzanne Conaway, okay? Suzanne Conaway is the wife of, um, of Mike Conaway, U.S. Congressman Mike Conaway. Interestingly, her first husband was Randy Kidwell, and he died on the famous Clayton Williams 1990 Valentine Day plane crash when Clayton Williams, being there, oh man, Clayton Williams was running for governor of Texas. Her husband died on that famous plane crash, and and another guy died on that plane crash was, um, I'm trying to think of his name, It'll come to me in a minute, but was the vice president for, for Tabor Construction. And uh, and then, but the, the point I was making here, then one more sibling was Marsu Wilson. Well, there's a Wilson that owns that home. What if that home is still in the Conaway family? Wouldn't that be interesting, especially if, if it's connected to the tunnels and the four underground million dollar homes and the old show parties, you know? So it's owned by Wilson and, there, and you know, Suzanne has a, has a sister named Wilson. And so did John Legeron. So I'll show you that. Next comment. Conaway announced his retirement a few weeks after I made the video showing concrete being poured behind my home. I'd just been back there with Homeland Security and showed them where I believed a tunnel was located going to my home and used for the underground old show parties and where a young girl was murdered at in 2010. Okay, and and this is on, actually from a video. I have this video, and and so on May 28th I met Homeland at the Midland Police Department. Okay, and I provide them a. a uh, three ring binder of evidence. I, I believe would solve multiple murders and stop this crime ring. On July 2nd, they contacted me, Homeland did, and wanted to meet me over at the Home Depot store. Okay, so I went over there and met them, and I showed them where I believe the human trafficking tunnels were at. You could see behind Home Depot where the ground was cut. You see it right there where the ground's cut. It's aimed directly at my home. And and so I have other, you know, clues that, that made me believe the people at the old show parties were parking in that parking lot, going underground somewhere there, and coming back over here via this tunnel into my house. And in my backyard was one of the four million dollar underground homes, three bedroom underground homes. Okay. So that's what I was showing Homeland, and then two weeks later, the ground's dug up and concrete's being poured, you know, and a lot of people have suspected that they were trying to, trying to, they were tampering with evidence to cover up capital murder, and and, and that would be a crime I would not want to be involved in, you know, uh, tampering with evidence to cover up a capital murder, murders, you know. Three months after that video, U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security Kevin McLean resigned, and six days later, U.S. Secretary of Energy Rick Perry resigned. Okay, I don't know why that did that. Let's see if we can pull that up. Okay, so here we go, right off the internet, October 11, 2019. Remember, I, it was July 2nd when I showed. Uh, homeland where I believe the tunnel was at it was July 17th when that video was made where they're pouring concrete and and uploaded and went viral or whatever and and then here three months later the secretary of homeland resigns six days after that the secretary of energy resigns was that because of oil shows energy oil energy oil do y'all catch the link there okay and that's the former governor of Texas we want to talk about that more in a minute you know and and I believe he was a commissioner Commissioner for Border Patrol before he come over here, which is interesting because it's you know the question's been asked if this is connected to illegal immigration and uh, smuggling from the border. Okay, so here's our next one. Rick Perry was Secretary of Energy from March second, twenty seventeen, December first. 2019 and governor of Texas from December 21st, 2000 to January 20th, 2015. He got that job after Bush left. Okay. So here's Rick Perry. Okay. This is just Wikipedia. I'm just showing you there. And so, so after, uh, Bush left that, that's when, you know, that, that's when, um, uh, Perry became governor of Texas, and that, and then after he left, Greg Abbott, who's still governor of Texas, uh, got that, got that position. Okay, 
And y'all can look that up yourself. Okay, he was governor of Texas when Mike Lawhon died the week before the 2008 old show started. And also when the young girl was murdered at the underground old show party in 2010. Remember, the remains of a young girl were found in 2013. I believe it was that girl Angie had told me about. He was still governor when I was ambushed and shot by somebody under my home in January 2012. Well, you know, here, I was reporting crime at the time, so I was a problem. And also in office when secret police and Midland K-9 police officer Chad Simpson was alleged to have murdered his wife and killed himself in December 2014. Uh, the problem is he didn't get identified till 2018 because I had to pay to get the secret police identified. I had emailed Governor Perry several times about these crimes. So this is a copy of the email. <coughs> Actually, there was a couple emails. Okay, so it's dated here December 14, uh, 2014, going to the governor, to the attorney general. At the attorney general at the time was Greg Abbott, right? He wasn't governor. He was attorney general at the time. And and so here I'm telling it, I sent the rape and murder story about the young girl being murdered at the old show party in 2010, which had police there. Andy was afraid to report that murder and told me high-level police were there. And here's right from, I think it was CBS 7 at the time, uh, news broadcast. We just received new information regarding the shooting that happened at the Midland Police Officer's home in Midland. Midland Police Chief tells us they're investigating the shooting as a murder-suicide. According to officials, the officer was found dead in his home. He is believed to be the one that pulled the trigger on a woman himself, Chad Simpson. The woman who was shot was transported to Midland Memorial Hospital, where she later died, Sandra Simpson. Okay. And and so, just so odd that I'm, I emailed this story to to uh, Governor Perry and Attorney General Greg Abbott about rape and murder about that underground old show party where police were there. And then on the same day, the day after, boom, you know, here one of the secret police caught inside my home in 2012, murders his wife and kills himself, uh, you know. In the story, you know, and uh, some people wondered if, that, if he wasn't murdered by the other secret police and it's covered up, you know. I thought it was surprising that the Bushes... Have, since they're from here, have never said anything about the first known secret police since Nazi Germany being caught on camera here in Midland or the many homeowners that are now documented reporting people in the attic in their hometown. But of course, they don't live here anymore and they have it for a long time, right? And they live at Crawford Ranch up by Dallas, so, you know, George W. does. And so here I had offered a reward. This was the meme that I used for $2,000 reward to anybody, anybody can identify the secret police. The first known secret police since Nazi Germany. That's what I used to call them, you know. Here two of them were caught on video showing up minutes after I had been ambushed and shot. And, you know, and, and no report telling me who they were. You know, they were secret for six years, literally. These, these guys here tried to disable the camera that accidentally caught them. I've got a recent video on that called Pictures of the Secret Place, y'all see it. And this is just copy and pasted right from my text messages from my private investigator. And he's naming them. He collected the $2,000 reward in May of 2018. It was Rosa Rodriguez, April Chandler, Tony Dickey, a lieutenant with the Midland Police Department, uh, Greg Chatwell, uh, Greg Nelson, Marty Barrett, Chad Simpson, no longer alive, Mike Naylor, no longer alive, Mark Gilliam, Michael Glick, John Woodward, a sheriff from a whole different county. First guy to show up was a sheriff from a whole different county. Nobody's ever explained that. And then he's followed by Midland Sheriff Naylor that died in, in two months before Simpson. So now you have two secret police dead and a policeman's wife and ain't nobody saying anything. You know, do you think that's odd? Okay, the Gestapo was the famous secret police of Nazi Germany and connected with millions of murders. This is a good reason that secret police are illegal. Okay, so this is right from Wikipedia. Gestapo, you can go look it up yourself. The Gestapo, okay, abbreviation, uh, whatever, or the secret state police was the official secret police of Nazi Germany, you know. So, there, you know, I went off the internet, found a picture of the secret police, and then I found a picture of some of their carnage, you know, because that's what secret police are about. You know, that's why they're secret, right? And, and that's what's going on in Midland, Texas. Okay. Uh, and, th and this is just from a, a friend here. It says, keep on going, buddy. And uh, and I said, I'm turning this into a video. I uh, hope you found that interesting right there. No accusations are made, as always. We're just stating facts, asking questions. It looks like there's multiple capital murders, you know, of, um, of you know, the little girl at the old show party, uh, the... Uh, Last homeowner, young homeowner in my homes. Obviously, he was murdered here. And then they tried to murder me. Actually, a guy named Aaron Packelhofer asked me if I knew the names of the four people that had been murdered and died in my house. You know, I, Clearly, I was supposed to be the fifth, and God saved my life. Uh, talk to you later.